such a powerful toxic fuel. It requires some thing to keep the pain suppressed. Um, and then that eventually breaks the system down and then it leads you to a forced. If you want to become wealthy and rich and fulfilled, this episode is for you because I sit down with a remarkable friend and a remarkable mentor of mine, Mike Dillard, in this episode. As we really peel back the onion when it comes to being able to understand what's really happening for you, for me, for us, for when it comes to being able to attract in wealth. Now, if you're wanting to earn more money specifically, you could be doing all the things right. You could be working, you could be hustling, you could be really frustrated because you think that you're doing everything right, but there's something missing. You're not getting the results that you really want. Well, that's why I'm so grateful and I'm so happy to be sharing this episode with you with Mike. Mike has so much amazingness that he shares in this episode and I'm gonna beg and plead to make sure that this is just a part one of so many more parts so I can sit down with Mike for us to be able to go deeper and further from this conversation as well. Now, if you're joining us on the podcast and please go join us on the Christopher Dufay YouTube channel and watch this conversation unfold on camera in Mike's beautiful new ranch in Texas. And also, if you're going to share this out on social, because I would love for you to share this out on social, please tag myself and Mike as well, because I'd really love to know what is it that you're actually going to use, take away, and be able to implement from this episode. And I would also love to be able to personally say thank you for you joining us in this episode. Mike, you've been someone that I've respected and admired for a really long time. Thank you. And before we kick this off, I genuinely want you to know that I'm really, really grateful for the model that you have put down mm. for me to be able to pick up. Mm. Um, the way you show up as everything. Like, I, is this guy perfect? I think he's perfect. Like, <laughs> generally, like, I think it's, it's incredible. Like, mm. it started as you as an entrepreneur where I was just like, wow, like, he does amazing work. And then... Uh, you shared your journey along the way and I just thought that was incredible and I respected and admired that so, so much. Mm. Uh, getting to know you as a friend has just been incredible. Like being here in your home, like this place is just remarkable. Mm. It's so good. And I just feel like you're going from strength to strength uh, and you're only just getting started, which is mm. really cool as well. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Especially with myself right now, going through a... Not a crisis, that's too much of a hard word. Uh, going through a shift, a change, a transformation, a metamorphosis, a, a shedding of the uh, snake skin, uh, a change of identity. How do we actually go through a change of identity and accept it and do it without ruining things? Because, and I'll just say one preface as well, for when... I don't know if I ever shared this with you, but uh, when I moved from uh, when I moved from Sydney to Dubai, I had the opportunity, and I was running my fitness business in Sydney. Everything was going great. Uh, I had bought my second property. I had just married the woman of my dreams. We just found out that she was pregnant with our mm -hmm. first child, and I was twenty five at the time, twenty five, twenty six, and uh, I just felt stuck. And I felt like something was wrong. And then I had the opportunity to actually move to Dubai to start the business. And I burned everything previously down. I sold my house. I gave my clients and my business away. Like I did everything. My wife was six months pregnant. I flew to Dubai. I knew one other person on the other side. Uh, I had three months to set the business up before I flew back to Sydney for her to give birth and then for us to move over. Like it was a crazy time. And then when I look back to who that person was back then, like I can't relate with that person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do we go through these identity shifts without losing our shit, without causing problems? Uh, well, ironically, that might be necessary, mm. right? Because to make a change that, that big, uh, it, it's definitely gonna be uncomfortable. And sometimes you just have to have to cut the ties and, and burn the bridges. So for me, uh, that was the primary reason I stopped doing the podcast, right? Five years of doing a podcast, millions of downloads, big show, a lot of time invested. Um, and I just stopped doing it because 
as I went through this process over the last three years. Um, talking about entrepreneurship and marketing became irrelevant to me. It was, it was shallow and unimportant and, and uh, a part of my old identity. And I just couldn't do the show anymore. But why would you, why would you let go of an asset that you've put so much time, effort and energy into that's successful? Um, because you have to, if you want to let go of that old version of you, you have to completely let it go. So I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with burning, burning the house down if you have to do it, if that's what's necessary to, to allow you to move forward. Um, and then it requires a lot of grace and patience which entrepreneurs are usually pretty uncomfortable with mm. and have, a, have, have some struggles with. But for me, when I was trying to figure out what to do next with my life, mm. um, it was a hard challenge because all of my knowledge and value was around marketing and, and building a business. And now I don't want to talk about those. So what the hell am I going to do with my life, right? Um, and what I found is that I would start to come up with ideas uh, in my head. I would come up with, well, what kind of life do I want to live? What kind of lifestyle do I want to have? You know, what, how much money do I want to make? Which I think is a practical question everybody needs to ask. And then I would start to come up with ideas that would, would check all of those boxes, right? I came up with a great idea for a software company. I'm sure it could easily be an eight, nine figure software business. We built out the prototype. We invested the money. We got it working. And I was like... I don't want to do this for the next 10 years of my life. That's not what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so I let it go. Um, Michelle and I and another friend came up with an idea for uh, a supplement business that nobody's doing right now. We think it could be an eight, nine figure business and be a lot of fun to build. And we sat on that for almost a year, um, did a lot of the testing, put money into it, started to, to build things up. And we're like, are we supposed to be doing this for the next 10 years of our lives, is that what we're here for? And I was like, nope. Um, so we let that go. <clears throat> and ultimately what I've, what I've realized is entrepreneurs specifically are really good at coming up with ideas because we have a problem in our life. We come up with an idea to solve that problem. But when it comes to what you're supposed to be doing with your life, if it doesn't make sense at the heart level as well, then it's not going to work out. You either shouldn't pursue it or if you do, it's, it's not going to work out. So for me, that became the litmus test. It's got to make sense in the head and it has to make sense in the heart. And when it does both, that's that eureka moment and everything feels congruent and easy. Um, and so I sat searching for that to click for two or three years wow. um, before it finally fell into place. So patience and grace, I think, are are important um, going through that process because it it's not something you can force. It just has to kind of come out of the, as a result of the evolution you're going through. And that evolution might take a couple of years. Mm. So that takes really big kahanas mm. to be able to allow that much patience and grace. And I think for me, I'm just talking 100% yeah. for myself where I got really good at doing, like I, I kind of call it like the warrior archetype where I was like, Mike, yeah. tell me to run through the wall, do it, do it, if that gets me to where yeah. the intention, the target is. And it was recently where I just started questioning everything in my life, where I was just like, who do I want to be? Uh, do I want to be married to my wife? What's the type of father that I want to be? What's the, who, what's the work that I want to be doing? How much money do I want to be? There was one day I was standing in the gym and I just like stopped in the middle of the gym. And for like two minutes, I just stood there and I was like, do I actually want to do this? Like be this person that does this? Like genuinely trying to question it to like the depths of as far as I could go. And it really sucked. And when you're saying that you're going through these questions, I'm like, oh my God, like they're really tough questions to truthfully answer at the end of the day. So if someone's struggling with ease and grace to be able to move through these, uh, what's your advice to them? I'm not, that's good. What's your advice to me? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, 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 again, it just comes down to patience and, and realizing there's not a deadline for this process. Uh, um, because again, as an entrepreneur, we just want to drive 
drive it home, get it done, mark it off the list. I mean, okay, I got my next chapter figured out. Let's get to work, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't work like that. Um, you, uh, the clarity that comes out of that is a result of the changes you're personally going through. And those changes are, are again, an evolution that's going to take time. So there is no rushing to a deadline or, or a finish line. Uh, who knows how long it's going to take, right? So um, for me, it was just trying to figure out I'm very much the same type of person as you learn and share, right? That's been my entire career for 20 years. And so, well, what do I want to learn about next? What do we want to share next? And, and really trying to figure that out. And the hardest part for me was not necessarily, well, actually starting over from ground zero when it came to a knowledge level as far as what do we want to teach? Mm. Um, and what we teach now is a result of this three-year process that, that I went through and that Michelle's gone through in her own way. Um, but it took that many years to acquire that knowledge, right? So that's, that's, I mean, that's it. it. You just have to have grace and patience for yourself and not force something because if you force something, it's going to end up being the wrong thing. And, um, you know, hopefully you ha you're in a position where you don't have to worry about money while you're going through this process. Mm -hmm. From my from my health crisis that I went through, I did have to worry about money because that basically, you know, put put me down to zero. Mm -hmm. um, and that was extremely difficult. That was a layer of difficulty that I wouldn't want anyone else mm -hmm. to go through. But uh, um, it can prolong the process because it'll keep you stuck where you were because you're having to use your previous skills and assets to continue to pay the bills while you go through this evolution. Yeah. I guess a few threads I want to go down now. I am, I was saying this to Alex Sharpen mm -hmm. two days ago, mm -hmm. and I was like, Mike is one of the best marketers in the world. Mm -hmm. And this is where I find it really interesting because I was like, you are mm -hmm. really good. Uh, to, and then for you to say like, I just don't want to talk about that stuff, which I totally get as well, because I got to a point where I was like, God, if I have to talk about that stuff again, I'm just going to blow my brains out. Like, oh my God. But when you're so goddamn good at it as well, and uh, I think one thing that is interesting when it's like, when you name me, you negate me. And so it's like the labels that we put upon ourselves mm. are also like a limiting container to ourselves as yeah. well. Yeah. How do you help kind of take that label off yourself, Mike, so that then you can open up to like the abundance of options that really are there, but we're probably got our blinkers on because we're really only allowing ourselves to see so much. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because, you know, we're, we're having another a, a photo shoot here tomorrow to get some new photos for both of us to redo my website, which we were talking about. I just kind of want to do what you just did. Because the, the photos of me and the person of me that's on there, those were taken probably five, six years ago. I don't even relate to mm. like the business suit and the entrepreneur mm. thing. And none of the copy is relevant uh, there anymore. And as we were talking about what do we want to do next, it was like, I want to show all sides of me. Mm. I don't want to just position myself and brand myself as an entrepreneur business person, which unfortunately I think most people end up doing. And then you get pigeonholed into this identity. Um, and then at least for me, I go through a period of growth every seven to 10 years where I, I completely change, you know, who I am. Um, and I think that is the purpose of life, mm. right? So for people who just want to stay stuck presenting themselves as they presented themselves for 10, 20 years, that, that makes me sad. Mm. What has the process of the last three years been like? And because what I respect so much out of it is like, you've gone through a very decent chunk of time to be able to like, I'm going to acquire a skill set. I'm going to master an area that I, I don't previously have before. Like, again, that takes huge cojones to do that. So like, what's the three years actually been like for you to be able to be like, okay, yeah, I've, let's do this. Um, my three years was interesting because it was, it's, it was a time that I call forced change. It was not a period of change that I was necessarily looking for. Mm -hmm. It was forced upon me in the form of a brain injury, mm -hmm. right? So one day I'm doing what I do and the next day I feel a click in my brain and that was it. My life was, was different from that point forward. Um, and that forced change took 
everything. Uh, it took my cognitive ability, so which is the way I make my living is with my brain, right? Um, uh, incessant insomnia, uh, couldn't drink the, the stuff I used to like to drink, couldn't eat what I ate, couldn't work out, couldn't hang out with my friends, couldn't do what I wanted to do socially, couldn't race anymore, couldn't do anything that made up the identity of Mike up until that point in life. And it, within literally minutes, it was Mike and then somebody else. Um, and I think over the last couple of years, a lot of people have been put in that position, maybe not to that extreme, but through what's happening in the world, through job changes, career changes, whatever it may be. It was a period of force change for a, a great percentage of the world. Um, and you can either fight to get it back, and that is ultimately where the pain is. The pain is in the struggle to keep, right? Um, where I had to really come to a point and just surrender and let go of all of that. I had to let go of the fact that I don't know if I'm going to race cars again or, um, uh, you know, what, what was interesting is that that transition and that pain is ultimately what planted the seeds for what we do today. So through a three year healing journey, I had to learn neurochemistry at a, a pretty deep level. I had to learn about the subconscious at a pretty deep level because all of that was, was required for me to heal. Um, and so I was having to pay attention to certain parts of life that I'd never even thought about, you know, previously, but that became my life on a daily basis. And so those planted the seeds for, for what grew into the next chapter, uh, of what we do today. So what turned out, what was ultimately the, the single biggest challenge of my life turned into to the biggest blessing of my life, right? Met Michelle, which we would not have probably met if I had not gone through that, uh, through that event and that, that evolution. But yeah, um, I, I just keep going back to the, the biggest thing that I had to do during that period was to surrender because mm -hmm. I was not in control of that situation as much as I wanted to fix myself the next day or the next week or the next month. It, just didn't happen for one reason or another. Mm. Um, and I had to surrender to that fact. And for someone who typically will just, as you mentioned, run through walls and get shit done, mm. that's a really hard position to be in. And so I had to surrender to the fact that my businesses were going to change. They're not going to be there. Uh, the money that I was used to making wasn't going to happen, you know, uh, during that period in time. And it forced me to become aware of all of my subconscious stories and patterns because when your identity gets broken down you you can finally see all the pieces in front of you on the floor and you're like oh that's interesting i didn't realize that my identity and my self-worth was tied to the amount of money that i made because mm -hmm. all of a sudden when i wasn't making any money i was depressed and suicidal and like what value do i have to offer the world and I don't serve a purpose anymore. And, uh, I mean, it was a really dark place for quite a while, but the epiphany around that was like, Oh, holy shit. My self-worth is tied to the amount of money I make. That's probably not very healthy. Mm. Um, and so I got to rebuild that sense of self-worth from a much healthier place. Oh, my friends didn't leave me. Oh, I do have worth to people and, and I'm not just, you know, an example of successful entrepreneurship or whatever it may be. And so it was very, very difficult. It was very painful, um, but it was freeing uh, on the other side of it because that's a rough, that's a rough spot to be in. And I think you see that a lot with celebrities, right? When all of a sudden they're, they're famous and then whether they're in a band or a movie actor, or whatever, and then that fame just goes away and then they turn to drugs or alcohol or depression or whatever it may be, their self-worth was tied to the accolades and the attention that they were getting, right? And all of a sudden that's gone. There's nothing left for them. Mm. And, uh, and so that was a really, really profound process to go through and, and an epiphany to have. And it's one that I hope everybody has the opportunity to go through. As hard as it is, it's what, it's what allows you to get to the truth on the other side and just expand in a much bigger way. And now, you know, the, the reason I don't have any interest in marketing anymore is because marketing is so simple mm. compared to the human psyche mm. and pursuing 
the, the meaning and purpose of your soul or why you're, why you're, why you're on here on this planet and what you're supposed to be doing and how the mind works and how the subconscious works. It's like marketing on a, on a scale of one to 10 difficulty wise is like a one or a two. And this is like a 10 because the amount of depth is infinite. Um, and so once you see that, it's like, well, how could you go back to, back to doing what's so easy already? So there's no growth there anymore. For me, I, uh, I was diagnosed with depression at the start of last year. Mm. Um, I had suicidal ideation. Like it felt like I was in a dark ocean just keeping my head above water and I could just drop at any moment. Mm. And the problem I think was exacerbated because my internal dialogue was, I have no right to be unhappy. Like I'm... I've, I've done the stuff. Like we'd recently just gone back to Australia. We had bought this amazing home. We'd just like moved into it. Like it was like, dude, again, it was like, I, I ticked the boxes, dude. Like what's going on? And now I feel literally the worst I'd ever felt before. Uh, and I don't really know what triggered it. Um, t it, it, was, it was interesting actually because I'm trying to be very cautious as to navigate, like still now navigating and being like, okay, like what's going on? It actually, it literally went away. Uh, I went for a walk one day. I did a beach walk one day and I was just, I was listening to a lot of different philosophies and I got really into Buddhist, but especially Stoic philosophy at yeah. that time. And I remember listening to heaps of Stoic philosophy. Uh, it was James Irvine. And then I walked in our house and my wife was sitting on the couch and she looked at me and I was like, you're pregnant. <laughs> and she was like, I just like, I just, I just knew it. And then from there it vanished away. Mm. And the only thing I can kind of like sense to myself now, and I think I'm just saying this to hopefully help uh, if someone else is being able to go through this, and I'd love to see your input on it is uh, I, the quote is you are your most self when you're not there. Mm. So for me, it stopped becoming about me. Mm. It was a uh, me just being consumed of myself that was causing the issue in the first place. And then when I turned it around and it was, okay, this is not about me anymore. It's about me giving and how do I come from that place of service? Like it was just a dramatic mm. shift. How can you help my, um, when someone's going through a dark place because I also pick up a real sense of like amazing forgiveness. Like you've got this amazing forgiveness that you've gone through all of this and you're so at peace with it as well. Like I really admire that. How the hell does that happen? You know, I, I hate to use the cliche Tony Robbins deal, but you know, it, a lot of things happen for you in life, mm -hmm. right? Um, so for me, when you were describing that, I was like, oh, that's just your soul's way of kicking your ass into the next level of evolution and uh, a lot of people especially when you have a, a lot of comfort and success where you're currently at that that's not the ingredient you need for change right mm -hmm. it has to be very uncomfortable mm -hmm. and so your life your soul whatever it may be will come and kick you in a way that will make you very uncomfortable so that you can move on and hey dude come on chris let's let's go bud mm -hmm. next chapter um and so, you know, for me, suffering's an attachment to remembering what you had, mm. right? And that's the, that's, and you don't have any more, that just leads to, to, to suffering. And so for me, it was just a very conscious process of having to say goodbye and let go to those things. And then ask, you know, well, cool, what's, what's next? What, what does this now open up the gates for? And to start to focus on that instead of what was, what can be and, and what could be. And, um, and it's been incredibly difficult <clears throat> and and yet the single most rewarding process i've ever gone through right and i mean we look at it today when we met two years ago incredibly sick like could barely walk up a flight of stairs wow. making you know paying the bills month to month and and trying to figure that out during i mean during during covid we moved six times in one year so every two months we i mean we lived at an extended stay hotel when we were between houses for for two months um, while homeschooling the kids and, you know, all of this other stuff. So, and at that point it was just cool. What's working and, and having gratitude for that and, and gratitude that I was, I was better than I was six months previous and 
previously um, and just paying attention to the progress and paying attention to what's working. And I mean, shit, now we're literally within 18 months better off than we've ever been, you know, in every category of life. Yeah. Um, relationship wise health and you know health still working on that in, in, in some capacity but mission purpose home family uh, it doesn't take long once you let go of the past version of you and just let the anchor go and stop trying to carry that shit up to the top of the, the next mountain that you're trying to climb um, it just opens up space for everything else to come in mm. so I find that so inspiring mm. I find that real, like, that's genuinely something that I feel inside of me that's just like, oh shit, that is a very strong feeling of hope that comes through me. That's really cool. Mm. Okay, so when it comes to what you've learned with, through this journey over mm-hmm. the last few years especially, uh, what do you think are some of the key principles that we should be operating from, from what you've learned? How do we actually ensure that we're moving through the, doing those hard times that, that should be coming in our lives? Like I, I also want to, one of my beliefs is uh, to think that we're never going to have problems, to think that we're never going to have hard times. That's not natural. That's not the way of the Dharma. Like that's just not life at the end of the day. Or that the hard times are going to be perpetual. Yes. Right. I think that's where most people get scared is they think that, okay, this is how things are going to be from now on. And then that's, that's where the dread comes in. Right. Cause if you knew, if you could pop outside yourself and, and, and look at your, your past, present and future and see that, oh, in 24 months, this is going to be passed. You're going to be doing great. You're going to be like, oh, cool. You know, not that big of a deal anymore. So, uh, I think that's a, a, a really important piece for people, but, um, the way to go through it quickly as quickly as you can and and with as much (laughs) grace as you can is to really just stop focusing on what's wrong or or what you've, what you've lost or what you don't know, and just focus on what you've, what you can learn going through this, what's coming up now that you're going through this process and, and journaling and, and taking that down and, and pursuing really deep work. I mean, gosh, for me in the span of 24, 36 months, I probably did 20 years of therapies all hypnotherapy to psychedelics and plant medicines and everything you could be, everything you could possibly use to explore my identity and my psyche. Mm. And so it's not like I sat on a couch and watched Netflix for two and a half years. I did the deepest, hardest work I've ever done in my life during that period. And that's what allowed the evolution to take place. Um, But if I hadn't done that, I'd probably still be stuck. You know, uh, who knows, who knows doing what, but suffering for sure. So I would just encourage people to use any tough, difficult transition point in life to see that and use that as an opportunity and not to focus on the hardship or what you've lost or what's changed or what you don't have anymore. But like, okay, cool. This is a big reset button. Now I get to reinvent who I am and what I want to do. And, and it it truly is a gift if you're willing to, to have a long enough time horizon and, and patient's horizon to, to ex- experience and uh, receive that gift. So That's really cool. Yeah. This has been profound. I love this so much. This has been such a great conversation. I know, Michelle, you set a really high bar. You, you set a high bar, but you've, you've met it, Mike. This has been great. Well, I'll, I'll ask you. So where, where are you now in your process? Thank you for asking. Yeah. Uh, do you know Alison Armstrong's work? Yeah, I, she was one of the... The third guest on my podcast. Okay, amazing. Yeah. Uh, so when I, soon after I put up that post on my website and I was like, Chris is, I don't know what it says. It's like, Chris is gone for a little while. He'll be back with yeah. his shit out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still figuring my shit out. Uh, I talked with a bunch of friends and mentors and a lot of them and they were like, you're in the tunnel. This is yeah. the tunnel. You're going from prince to king. Ah, uh, yeah. And... For me, I feel like there's light down there. Um, I know that I'm doing not, I don't think I'm on the home straight. And for me, it was a case of questioning everything in my life, really trying to get to the root of like, who do I want to be and everything that then spawns off from that as well, Uh, which has been 
really difficult, like mm. really difficult to actually properly do that and like give myself that time and the space. And do you know, the best, I believe the best personal development book is the journal at mm. the end of the day. Um, there's also been two years of psychotherapy. I've got, I've seen every type of healer that you could possibly go to. Um, pretty much every psychedelic, do you know what I mean? Mm. Multiple times. Um, and it's really come to a point where I feel like I'm actually starting to love myself for the first time in my entire life. Mm. Yeah, that was the, probably the single biggest win that came through my process, mm. uh, especially after the, you know, the identity with the money piece. The, the antidote to that or the, the solution on the backside was getting to a place of self-love no matter what I was doing on it in an external way. Mm. And when I reached that, I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is much better, mm. much better place to be. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. I appreciate that. Like it's, um, I've fallen in love with philosophy. Like it's, mm. I have a private philosophy mentor now that we do sessions every single week. Like I cannot stop reading it and studying it and learning and wanting to apply. And that goes into down different rabbit holes and realms. And, but also very much coming to, uh, so the Greeks use the word phronesis, which is like practical philosophy. And I think that's what like, what do I do today? Like, how does that help me get through Thursday? Mm -hmm. Like, how do I become a great father because of a friend because of it? Like, how, how do I actually navigate life mm -hmm. um, rather than just intellectualizing or philosophizing about the whole time? Yeah. And so it's been interesting because it's led me to now being like, yeah, like this these are the conversations I want to have. There will be nothing better that I do today other than this right now. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing that truly lights me up. And it's also been interesting, like I was really looking at that entrepreneur label and being like, is that me? Is that what I want to continue doing? And I, I, I love business. I, I, there's so many aspects to I love to it, but it's been very interesting actually getting to the point of over the last, like I've got to be, open and honest yeah. is over the last six months, the company has completely changed. Either every team member has actually changed seats or been replaced. Uh, our offers completely different. The mechanics of the delivery is completely different. The marketing is completely different. Uh, uh, by December, I'm going to be replaced by CEO. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like someone else is coming in. Uh, Josh is amazing. Like head coach is going to be the face of the business. And then that giving me the space to be like, like there was one day I uh, woke up. I had about 15 minutes of Slack messages to reply back to. And then I went and did a sauna and ice bath at this place that's just around the corner from where we are. And I was sitting in the grass, in the sun, having a coffee, knowing that I didn't have to do anything else for the day. Everything was taken care of. And I was terrified. <laughs> Utter terror. Like, and I was just like, what the F is going on right now? And like, I could step back and logically, I was like, like, dude, like, this is amazing. And there was like, there was an essence to be like, wow, this is really incredible. But then I'd be like, whoop, and like this vortex. And I'd just be like, back to terror as mm. well. Uh, so that's where I'm at right now. So how old are you? 35. 35K. It's, uh, it's super cool to watch. Uh, I'll, I'll just say our colleagues and peers as we all hit around 40, mm -hmm. just like popping everywhere into this <laughs> next phase of growth. And it, and it literally, it's happening to everybody. You know, me, Tucker, Aubrey, um, I mean, shit, especially in here in Austin, you, mm. you name it, anyone that's kind of in the 35 to 45 range that is a business owner is just blowing up, uh, you know, their life or their business in some way into an, in the next level of growth. Um, and it's super cool to watch. So for what me, I, I'm is? excited by it. What do you think it is? Like what, what's happening? Is it something happening on more of a collective level or is it? Uh, I would... I would say both. I think it's a natural progression, right? Mm. I think it's just a natural, you hit around that, that 40 year state. The, the motivators that motivated all of us to achieve the way we achieved have kind of worn off mm. at that point. And, and I, sorry, can I just speak to that point? Yeah. Um, someone asked me a similar question and I was like, I feel like my fuel source has changed. Yeah. Like I went from like a combustible petrol engine yeah. and now it's like solar panel. Like it's just different. Yeah. Yeah. The fuel source isn't there anymore. And it, and it has to because it, it's corrosive on the body. 
Mm -hmm. And so when the body hits around the age of 40, especially if you don't take care of yourself, um, then it can't sustain that form of fuel Mm. anymore. And it'll just start to break down because that form of fuel usually comes with the the need to buffer the system in some way, right? Whether it's alcohol or food or whatever vice Mm -hmm. it is, it's like, that's such a powerful toxic fuel. It requires some thing to keep the pain suppressed. Um, and then that eventually breaks the system down and then it leads you to a forced period of change. And, um, and it, entrepreneurs, for the most part, are fueled by pain from their past. And so it's a very common thread. And, and around the age of 40, again, I just, I believe this system can't tolerate that form of fuel anymore. And it'll force you to change fuel sources willingly or unwillingly. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. That really puts me at ease to be perfectly honest. Cool. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Every single time, uh, I'm with you, I walk away happier, a better man and clearer with life. Uh, so I really appreciate you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you brother. for sharing it. Appreciate it, thanks um, for having me on. Yeah, thank you so much. I, uh, I'm definitely gonna be begging and pleading to do this again next time I'm back. Uh, well, where does someone go to find out actually more about what you do? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, what we do, so Michelle and I took all of the lessons we learned about ourselves internally and we decided to apply that to money specifically one of the biggest challenges that i had to go through was uh the fact that i was like i didn't know if i'm ever going to be able to work again i need to replace my income with passive income and so having to figure that out and then figuring out the internal stories around money and, and internal beliefs around money all just made sense. So I don't know if this is going to be something we do for five or 10 years, but right now uh, we have richereveryday.com, which is where we're basically teaching people how to change their subconscious stories about money. And uh, it's a, it's an important piece of life. And I think our experiences have been unique enough to, to allow us to, to help people in a, in a pretty unique way that, that nobody else is doing right now. So yeah, Amazing. that would be it richereveryday.com yeah done I love it thank you so much thanks brother always great to see you impeccable